Hi guys, I'm back. I'm pretty sure I forgot to tell you in my last video that I was not going to be doing a tutorial last week because I was going on vacation to Florida and that is what I did. Um, but I'm back now. So in the theme of vacation-y, seaside-y, ocean-y vibes, I thought I'd do um, like a polished seashell. I bought this gorgeous polished um, shell from a store while I was there. Absolutely gorgeous. It's not going to be exactly like that because I think it would be nearly impossible to get it like that. But my take on a polished shell. All right, so... I've got four equal squares of Primo Pearl. Um, I used a two inch square cutter to cut them out and they're rolled onto a number four on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting. And I've got one, two, three, four, five um, squares of translucent, uh, Primo White translucent actually, again rolled onto a number four. And one more square of the uh, pearl which is going to be used down the road so that's all you're going to need clay wise and then I've got some mica powders so I've got a gold this is the cyan blue any kind of light blue would work like a lavendery color any light purple would work and a silver so I've got kind of a random mix of mica powders there but I'm also going to be using these Cernit sparkling duos now they've got um, this one's violet slash green, so it's like a two two way colour going on. And I'm also going to be using the Tropic Sunrise. I've got the Viola Fantasy, Tropic Sunrise, Arctic Fire, Pacific Lagoon, Lago Lagoon, <laughs> Pacific Lagoon and Lapis Sunlight. And these are all from the Cernit Sparkling Duo range now these really only show up the colors vibrantly on a dark color and obviously i'm not going to be using them on a dark color but i thought i'd use them in this just to give that little bit of extra iridescence all right so first thing first then let me make some room as usual i'm going to move my st stuff over here and i'm just going to start with these pearl clays and all, all i'm going to do is get my mica powder these ones are quite handy, they've got little shakers on them. And I'm just going to drop some on there. No, nope, that one's not coming out. Let me take that off. That's still got the um, paper lid in it. I didn't take it out yet. So I'm just going to tap some on. Now you can make these colours as vibrant as you would like. Or as pale as you would like. So I'm not using a great deal of um, mica powder but enough to give it a decent colour but again you can make the colour less vibrant if you want to so that's what I'm doing for that one and then the next one shake some of that on there just rub it over the surface that's that one the silver like so and then last but not least this nice light blue use my brush for that one so it's all on you how much you want to put on guys but you can see I'm not putting a great deal on enough to cover the surface like so so that's the four pearls done I'm just going to wipe this up and then the translucent and I'm just doing this exact same thing but I'm using the um, the Cernit duo sparkling duo mica powders and again, roughly the same amount on these squares as well. Just give it a little rub on there. So you can see a little bit of that colour on there. I don't know if you can pick it up on this camera, but 
you can see and it's really shiny and that's really why I wanted to use them you're not going to get um, really obvious colours doing this but they're just so pretty the iridescence is just so pretty so I thought I'd go with it you don't have to use these you could use um, oh, I'm trying to think like the nail powders that you can get that they look clear when you take them out they look white when you take them out of the bottle but then when you put it on top of a darker colour the colour really shows through I hope you know what I mean by that So again, I'm just rubbing some of that powder on each of these squares using all of those mica powders. And there's a very, very, only very subtle difference between them when they're put on light clay, but there is a little bit of a difference. You could probably just stick to one of the colors actually, but I've started, so I'll finish. You can see this one's like, um, almost gold this is called tropic sunrise yeah it's like a yellowy color in there you can really see it actually so again just rubbing that on there I don't think you can really pick it up on the camera because of the light reflecting down but there is a subtle difference and then the last one pop that on there, give that a rub in and there we go okay so you've got all your mica powders on your pieces of clay I'm just going to wipe my fingers off a little bit and then you've got this one piece of the pearl white left over and all I'm going to do is um, break this up into equal parts to mix in with the translucent squares so just as equal as you can get it it's no big deal if that it's not exact but I'm just popping that on there whoops a little bit more on that one a little bit more on that one and a little bit more on that one all right so when you've done that these are all going to get passed through the pasta machine and thoroughly mixed now this is kind of aiming for like a mica shift it doesn't have to be perfectly the mica powders don't have to my, the mica particles don't have to be perfectly aligned for this but as best as you can when you're rolling it through the pasta machine you can lengthen it a little bit by taking it down onto a lower setting so you've got some room to play with so i've taken this down onto a seven and i'm going to keep folding and passing through the pasta machine the same way so that way we are getting those um, mica particles to go in the same direction so just keep doing that until it's thoroughly mixed in whoops so a good few turns through the pasta machine probably I'm going to say 10 times ish through the past machine it's just just to hopefully get the particles going in the side the same direction so that we can get a bit of a mica shift so I'm going to do that for all of these colors I'm going to mix each one together separately and I'll be back okay I've mixed all those squares then so th these are all the translucent with a little bit of pearl thrown in them over this side and this is the pearl with the mica powder as well mixed in and all I'm going to do is take each one of these and just roll them up into little tiny logs like this give it a little squeeze give it a little twist make sure it's all nicely um, you know a solid log don't want any air trapped in there but just roll and give a little twist on each one okay and when you've done that just take your blade and cut them in half so we've got two of those purplish ones same with this one 
roll them up into little logs give it a little squish little squish a little twist a little roll roll it out and cut it in half ish it's not an exact science I'm going to do the exact same thing with all of this all of the remaining pieces including the translucent so when I've done that I shall return I've got all those um, little logs rolled out scruffy little logs that they are but that's fine these are all the translucent ones over here and the pearl ones over here and I'm just going to take each one of the pearls and mix it with one of the translucent it doesn't matter which it's pretty random put them together like so and twist actually what I'm going to do is I've changed my mind guys that's that's the first one but what I'm going to do is just um, put them together before I go any further after that I was going to roll this out more but I'm not now I'm just thinking out loud sorry just ignore me so just put um, one of the pearl one of the um, translucents together and just twist them together like so so you've got little spirally things no rhyme or reason I'm just pairing what whatever up together doesn't matter which goes with which just lump them together and twist okay and then it's this one this one I'll do that one with that one I'm just roughly twisting them at the moment and then you've got two little logs left that are going to be all on their own. Alright, so when you've done that, actually, yeah, now I'm going to leave that like that. Alright, so when you've done that, take one of your twisty log things and continue to twist and we're going to do the same thing with all of them. And give it a little roll and another little twist. Now you can make these bands that are going round as wide or as narrow as you would like. So I'm probably going to mix it up a little bit, make some narrower. So the narrower ones means you're going to have to twist a little more. And then roll. And you want a nice little point on one end. And it getting a little bit wider as it's going up. It doesn't have to be, you know, really thin to really wide a gentle slope so to speak so I'm just going to twist this a little bit more I want those stripes in there to be a little bit narrower give it another roll make sure you've got a nice point on one end like so so you've got this long stripy snake and it's literally going to be turned into a spiral this is so easy but so effective now I'm just going to use just a little bit in the center and I'm going to cut away at an angle and put that that piece to one side so we've got this little almost looks like a snail shell with this little bit here cut at an angle all right so that's the first one then get another one doesn't matter which twist again a little roll twist again I'm going to try and keep these bands a little bit wider if I can and just roll it out into another nice point but I'm just going to cut this away about there and then this has got this slanted cut here has then got to join up with that first original cut that you made so they nicely nicely I need to put my teeth in guys they nicely join together like so and then I'm just going to cut another little angle on this one and there's just a little tiny little end left like that so that's the second spiral and then I'm going to get one of those translucent ones actually I'm going to just put these two together I might as well and just twist those up as well 
I was going to use them individually, but I changed my mind again. There's no rhyme or reason really, it's pretty random. Twist whichever colours you want to twist together. Roll them out as thin as you want, keep the, the bands wider, narrower. It will all work. So I'm going to take this one a little bit longer I think. But I've kept the bands fairly wide on this one. Okay, so let's just get rid of that little end again and join this up. Oops, join these slanted cuts together. They don't have to perfectly match, and I found in fact if they're not exactly lined up, it, it gives an extra little effect to the overall look. And I'm just going to cut away again at an angle. And we've got this left, so we've still got these left, so we can make another one. Okay, right, let's go with this purplish one. Nice little bit of lavender in there. Same thing, twist and roll. Twist and roll. take that little end off so I can match my cuts up and again just wrap round into a spiral into a spiral like so let's get rid of this bit here so now we've got another bit that we can make another one with over there and that's all you keep doing guys I would ask you if you would rather me stay and do this all on camera or go off camera and finish it but of course I can't ask you. Sometimes I wish I could. But um, I think I'll just do this last one and then do the rest off camera. So twisting and rolling, trying to vary the width of the little bands that are running across as you go. I just think it looks a bit better if you do try and vary them a little bit and they're not all the same width. It just adds a little extra effect. So I'm making these ones quite thin. Like that. This is very spirally, this one. Just take the little end off, just so you've got a nice little sharp cut like that and join him up with the other one bring it round try and make the cuts in a different place if you can like there's this cut here from the last one so I don't really want to cut it there again so I'm just going to bring that one round a little bit and then cut at an angle about here all right, so I'm gonna go and do the exact same thing with all those other pieces and I'll okay, be Okay, I've completed my spiral. All my colors are all together. I'll just quickly show you close up. That's basically a simple spiral. We've got all these little bits left. Now you can do one or two things. You can continue to roll these out and do the same thing, or you can just lump them all together, which is what I did. And you're gonna get a little bit of a different look, but you'll see when we get to that. So I'm just gonna put all those pieces together and just literally just twist them all together like this. It just gives it a little bit of a different look I found, a little bit more muted when you do it this way, but it still looks really cool. So I'm just gonna keep rolling these all together, making sure there's no air bubbles and it's a nice solid log. Again, you can twist as much as you want if you want more thin stripes going round or or thicker, then don't twist it as many times. But you do need to roll it out fairly long. So I'm just going to take this down to a nice point here and just stretch it out a little bit. So you've just got a long stripey log.
I don't even care if it's, you know, level all the way down. No big deal. Just roll it into a nice long log. Make sure just one end is nice and pointed. And then you're just going to spiral this up as one piece rather than separate pieces like this. So I'm just going to do that. Quickly roll it up. And it just gives a more muted look. Obviously because you've mixed it more. And that's really it guys for that one. Okay, so we've got two spiral spirals. This one's a little more muted. And this one's a little bit more obvious in pattern. Now this is the one that I'm going to work with now. So you've got your first spiral, the one where you used all the separate um, pieces and pieced them all together. I'm just giving it a little rub, just to smooth it down a bit. Make sure it's stuck nicely to the tile. And I'm going to get my roller and I'm gently rolling, not too much. Just a very gentle roll. You want to try and get those pieces all nicely stuck together. What I want to do now is literally take my flexible blade, make sure it's a nice sharp one, and I'm going to cut through it like it's a mica shift. So I'm just taking a very thin layer off the top. And these bits that you're shaving off can also be used. So nothing is going to waste. You can either just use all these bits for chippy choppy or you can piece it together to make another shell like piece. But I'm just taking off the very top layer. So you're cutting really thin but it's leaving that mica shift kind of look. I just think it looks really cool, very delicate. Like so. And now you can see the difference. Hopefully you can see the difference. I can from here. Like so. I'm just gonna see if there's any more that needs cutting away. Maybe just a fraction here and there. So you're really just taking the very top layer off. And some of these bits are going to be a little bit useless, but again, chippy choppy. Let me have a think if I need to take any more away. Just a little bit there. And it just gives it a more blurred kind of look it gives it a very soft finish so when you're happy with that and I think I'm happy with mine I need to get some paper just regular paper and give it a nice burnish and I can't find my steel soap again I'm always losing things as you know right there it is so I'm just going to get my steel soap. You can find these on my Amazon storefront. They're ideal for burnishing. I will leave a link in the description for my Amazon shop. But I'm just giving this a good old burnish. And I'm not even bothered if um, the piece isn't completely level all the way across. I want it to look like a shell and shells aren't perfectly level, perfectly even. Alright, so that's one side. Now that's going to be the inside of the shell. So it's not as... It's a little bit more of a subtle look. I'm just going to get rid of that bit there. I didn't like that. And re-burnish that bit. Okay, so that's that. Then now what I'm going to do is take the whole piece and turn it over and you'll be able to see the difference now so that's the side that I've shaved so it's like a mica shift it's gorgeous isn't it 
and then there's this side which has still got the more obvious pattern now it's up to you which way you want to do it this could be the front of the pendant if you so wish or this could be the front of the pendant so basically you've got a reversible piece um, but this side is more of an obvious pattern because you haven't shaved any off although I am going to shave a tiny bit off not much just a little tiny bit I'm just going to give it a quick burnish first and I'm just taking tiny bits off here and there I just want to soften it just a little bit but I'm not going over the whole piece just here and there still want to maintain that more obvious pattern on this side and there's a little bit raised just there so I'm just going to take that off and I think I'm good with that alright so one side you take off the whole top layer completely over the piece the other side you just take a tiny little bit off here and there if you want to you don't have to do that you can keep it as is good burnish and there we have it okay now obviously you want to cut this into some kind of shape you can do any shape you want really but in keeping with more of a shell look I just drew out a very simple template very very simple so I'll just show you again that's the back that had the whole top layer shaved off it's so gorgeous wait till you see it baked and then you got this side which is more of the obvious pattern so again it's up to you which way you want to be the front or the or the back of the shell I'm keeping mine this way up and I will be putting it on a bowl to dome it but before I do that I want to decide where this shape is gonna go and like I say it's a very very basic shape and I'm probably going to even cut it a little bit big, bigger because I'm going to lose some of those beautiful colours if I don't. So I'm just using that as a guide. I'm going to get my flexible blade and I'm going to, I am going to cut this a bit bigger guys. Just to make sure I get at least some of those colours in there. And I can always tidy this shape up afterwards. I mean, that's a very rough guide. I mean, I should—I probably should have made that a little bit bigger, actually. But oh well. My other pieces that I did, I used this, and um, maybe I made my spiral a little too big. So you really need to work out what size pendant you're going to make and work with that. And I'm just going to keep that on there just to guide me on the shape. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I didn't want just to use a regular cutter. I wanted more of a seashelly look shape. And I'm just going to smooth those edges down like so. And that's that piece, but I am going to put it on a bowl and dome it. So I'm going to put it this side on the bowl. And it's going to give it a really nice soft dome. Okay, I'm just going to give that another burnish. Just to make sure it's lovely and smooth. A little bit of a shape here and there. This piece is actually quite big. But once you've domed it, it's not going to look as big. And it's all on you how big you want your piece. If you want the piece to be smaller, then make... A smaller spiral. Just giving it another little quick shape. I'm going to round that bit off up there a little bit. Just play around until you're happy with your shape and that's that's mine but I'm going to dome it like I said but I've left my bowl upstairs so I can't show you. Oh wait a minute I do have a bowl down here hang on guys. Oh, no, let's go. 
It's got crap in it. <laughs> Not literal. Oops. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry guys. I don't have a bowl up here. Not a usable one anyway. Alright, so that's that piece and that's going to get domed. Right, so I'm just going to put that to one side and then obviously we've got all these little bits left here. Um, and all I do for that is roll out a piece of translucent and then just place them wherever just to make it look pretty but I'm not going to do that one on camera so this is our other spiral that I made where I just mixed all the colours up together and this just gives a more subtle look I'm actually going to roll this a little bit as well alright and same thing I'm just going to treat it like a mica shift and just slice through and again you've got these lovely shavings that you can use for another piece I will, sh I will make it and I will show you at the end okay so I'm just taking off the top layer again I'm not throwing those shavings away So that's that's one side and this is definitely a more blended blended look actually looks like a lollipop doesn't it <laughs> doesn't look like a shell so that's just one side I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put some indentations on the other side just to liven it up a little bit because it looks a bit flat Okay, so I'm going to turn it over and you can see you've got that more obvious pattern again on this side. But what I'm going to do on this one is get my wavy blade. And it's not going to do a great deal. It's just going to give it a little bit more of an interesting addition. So I've got my wavy blade and I'm just going to place it down flat and push it in just to make some indents like so, just little wavy indents and the same up here okay just whatever you fancy just to push in just to make a few little extra patterns I'm going to give it a quick roll and then I'm just going to shave a little bit away And it really is a very subtle pattern on this. Just gentle little shaves like so. Okay, so that's another one you can do. Slightly different look from the first one. And quick burnish. And I think that's good so again like I said slightly different look from the other one but I thought it would be cool to show you a slight variation so there's that that one you can see those little ridges but of course I've burnished it so they're actually smooth and then that side is just more spirally than anything okay so for this one I think I'm gonna cut a circle but I think that's a little big stretch it out maybe try and fit it on just got to give this a quick roll try and fit that circle on uh, 
section more and I think I've got it all on there now and again this is quite a big piece but again I'm going to put this on a bowl to dome it I just thought I'd do a simple round one but I am going to do a little cut away as well so I'm just going to use this round cutter just to trying to get it as centered as I can from this angle hopefully that's good a bit tricky to see push it out and that's all I'm doing so that's that piece I'm just going to gently lift this put it on my paper give it a little smooth I mean if you wanted you could um, go online and look up shell shapes and trace them a lot of shells have got those like scalloped ed edges I, th I think that would look really cool but for the sake of this video I'm just going to do it like this and like I say I've got these shavings left here these bits are probably just going to become chippy choppy but waste not want not all right so there's that one just going to smooth it round a little bit and there's that one like I say I'm going to dome both of these so I'm just going to place them on a bowl and bake them I'm going to bake them for an hour at 275 which is primo's temperature and then like I say I'm not going to do this on camera but if you just gently pick up your little shavings I mean look how pretty that is you don't want to throw that away and just place it on some translucent clay and then just take each of these other little shavings and just kind of you know place them where you think looks good so I'll do that off camera and I will show you the finished piece all right just to give you an idea all right guys so I'm going to go and bake those I'm going to go and do another piece with these little shavings and all right I'll be these back. have um, been baked and I've sanded and buffed all through the grits starting at 320 all the way up to 3000 I have a video where I show you how to do that I will leave a link in the description but anyway this is the first piece and I just love it and it's just so shiny all that mic has really shined up nice so that's the front and then that's the underneath side which is just as nice in my opinion you could wear this either way I think so there's that one and then this is the one that I did where I just mixed all the leftover pieces and did one big spiral and then a few indentations again sanded and buffed and that's the back just a simple spiral but just as pretty so there's that one I love these they're so summery and then this is the one that I did using just those little leftover scraps again so pretty um, and I actually used this cutter for this from Ojoy Creations I will leave a link to her shop and she also has this this cutter which I think would be nice for a shell so there's those three <coughs> Let me just show you the translucency of these, it's pretty cool. So cool. That one. And then this one. Alright, so they're the three that I did from that one batch. Let me just quickly show you a couple more that I made. This one, and you can get an idea of how to string them as well. So this one was um, just shavings like this one, laid onto some clay, backing clay. And I've got some leather cord here, popped a bead over, and then I've just used um, a toggle clasp at the end. So that's a completed piece which I think looks rather charming and then this is one of the other ones that I did in the same way as this one this one's a little bit smaller so just a heads up if you want to make it you know a smaller size obviously make the spiral a little bit smaller maybe roll them a bit tighter or something um, and all I did was add some little danglies on there pretty pinched bail and a nice light blue 
necklace. So there's that one. Let's see what the translucency looks like on this. So pretty. All right, guys, so there's all the pieces, some finished, some not, but there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you later. Bye.